How strong is a Prusik, a Climb Heist, or an Auto Block? We're going to test all three friction hitches today in different diameters, so we're going to probably bite off more than we can chew. So stay tuned. <laughs> Hi, my name is Ryan Jinx, and welcome to another Slack Snap episode. We're gonna pull test Prusix on a nine point, how big is that rope? Oh, hold on. On a 10.5 millimeter dynamic rope. And we have different diameters of Prusik loops. Uh, this is a hollow block, that's the brand of this one. And we're gonna test the different diameters and we're gonna test three knots and it's a lot of information, so I'm going to organize that in the description below. So if you just want to see the results, you can go down there, but please hit the like button if you're not going to watch the whole video. We also have timestamps in case you want to just skip to your favorite part. Anyways, let's get it over there. So here's our Slack Snap machine where we use a soft release to hold a hydraulic that is stabilized by paracord and is extended with soft shackles. And we already have a setup with our dinos to the other side. And so this is our lab here. So let's first show you how we're gonna tie the knots. So we'll first start with the Prusik. This is gonna be our finished product. So you wanna just put the knot off to the side cause that's where the carabiner will clip. And you're going to go through itself three times. Like so, and dressing it is very important. And that is a Prusik friction hitch right there. Okay, so a climb heist is the next one. And that is where you offset the knot again. We're gonna go up the rope here, There's three wraps. You put that through there. And we're gonna want to make this close as possible. So dressing these is very important. Okay, so that is tied up against there. And then we pull down on it. That is the one I end up using the most when I'm repelling. I like that one a lot. So an auto block is similar in the fact that you go up three times as well, but uh, you just end up clipping, let's go around one more, end up clipping just both of these together, sliding that up, and that should hold. Let's find out what the braking strength of my finger is. So the general rule is you want three wraps with a diameter of rope that is three millimeters or less of the rope you're wrapping. And we all know what I like about rules. Test the limits of them on Slack Snap. So let's get started. We'll start with the smallest diameter. We'll start with a paracord, four millimeter, and work our way up or down, depending which way you're going up the rope. Where you find these is either in a hall system. I back up my ATC repels with these, sometimes I agree, agree, repels if I'm scared. And also a poor man's backup harness. So there's all sorts of uses that it's pretty nice to be able to grab a rope from friction rather than like a toothed uh, device like an ascender. Let's just see how strong they are because when I'm repelling, I'm always wondering if it would actually hold me if it was the only thing. Climb heist on four millimeter. Auto block on four millimeter cord. Ooh, she's slipping. At 1.34. This is only to add friction, not completely stop and hold you. Interesting. What if we add more wraps? So we have the auto block with four wraps. Ah, she's slipping again. At 5.32 higher. Oh, interesting. Wow. Because you're pulling on both these ends rather than, it's like a loop doubled rather than like a loop single. So here is a loop doubled. So this is technically the strength of four strands minus knot loss. And it's 550 paracord, which means it's 550 MDS, 550 pounds, of course. And here's paracord in a loop. Pull 
Press it with five millimeter cord. Four point five six. <laughs> Climb heist with five millimeter cord. Slipping at three point three. We did get it up to 6.3, but I don't think this is gonna break. So this got welded shut. This is the climb heist with five millimeter. And this is welded. <laughs> oh, dang, gnarly. For consistency, we're doing the Prusik one more time with the same material as the last one. It, uh, it broke and didn't slip like the other one. Auto block with five millimeter cord. Wow, that is slipping. <laughs> At 0.36. Auto block with five millimeter cord wrapped four times. Ropes, rubbing on ropes is bad. You create nylon saws. What I'm curious about is the fact that the green rope, it's touching a different spot all the way through, but this is the same spots touching over and over, but it's not cutting through this rope or accessory cord. Why do you think that is? Put that in the comments below because it just seems counterintuitive. It is interesting how much of a difference we're getting between slip edges with different knots or how many different wraps. Literally just got 0.3 with two or three reps and three point something with three or four reps with the same cord wrapped in the same way. We're gonna find out now for a seven millimeter diameter if it's going to slip before it breaks. Seven millimeter prussic. Seven. Auto block with seven millimeter cord wrapped in extra fourth time. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's annoying. Clem heist seven millimeter. Whoa, wow. Neato. Oh, that is so cool. Okay, so this broke. This was all happening around seven or eight kilonewtons, by the way. The peak force we got was 11.62. Seven millimeter prusik. Two, three, five. Oh, slipping. Even though the accessory cord gets stronger, the thicker it gets, the closer the diameter is to the rope you're wrapping around, it doesn't grab as good. So now I'm curious what happens if we put a 10.5 millimeter rope on a 10.5 millimeter rope. I'm gonna cut the end off of this grain rope and use it to make uh, the three friction hitches and see what happens. Okay, we have our prusik and I am just so strong that I can make it slip. <laughs> Even if I pull one side, I can't get this thing to grab. This is not working. There we go. Nope. Nope. Dang it. Okay, for the climb heist, that is three wraps. Very difficult to work with. <laughs> yeah, forget it. It doesn't work, just like everyone says. So ideally, you want it three millimeters smaller than the diameter you're wrapping it around. And I believe so far we found that five millimeter on this 10.5 is a nice balance between strength of the accessory cord and it's slipping. So now let's test the hollow block. This is 10 millimeters wide by five millimeters thick. Looks like little tiny slack line. And it is sewn, which you still want to avoid putting the carabiner directly on that part. 
and we're going to put this on because this I believe has more friction and uh, it's designed for this. Three wraps with our hollow block doing an auto block and it slips. A peak force of 0.42. Four wraps. And it starts slipping at 1.38. Which an auto block isn't meant to hold technically. It's meant to add friction. We have a Prusik with our hollow block. Oh, that is fuzzy. And this broke, oh, this is welded, and it broke at 5.84. So there was a lot of data here, so I don't want it to get lost on anybody. This MBS is 3,147 pounds, and this is an older piece of material. And so naturally it's gonna be weaker. And when you test old soft goods, the variables are just, so this is, entertainment more than it is true science but it is interesting to see how things react with other things our five millimeter in a prusik was about the same force as this depends what you have depends if you just want a finished product and you don't have a bunch of five millimeter accessory cord lying around you could buy yourself a hollow block this is also used for many different friction hitches honestly i really don't see the value of these please put in the comments below if you think they're valuable i definitely don't think you should ever use one of these as life supporting but it is nice to know that if it's connected to my harness while I'm repelling that, if I'm using a five or even a seven millimeter accessory cord, then I'm going to probably not break it on a repel. You can also use these as lightweight ascenders. You can also use these as uh, hauling or backing up hauling systems. Put in the comments below where you use friction hitches. But if you learn to stay past the jingle, we might do one more neato thing. If you wanna get some merch, slackline.com slash shop slackline.com slash bolting bible but you can't guess what's there and if you made it all the way to the end of this video you win yourself a free subscription push that red button to redeem your prize thanks for watching cheers This next knot is for our friend Greg German, who we think is pretty cool. He spends a ton of his time and um, intellect putting together how-tos on how to uh, remove bolts. And he also designs many of the tools that we use for removing bolts. So he calls this knot an RBS, which I'm not sure what that stands for. And we did some tests a couple months ago for him that we really messed up on. So today, hopefully we get it right, Greg. He uses this uh, little setup as an emergency ascender, and he's wondering if it's stronger than a regular Prusik in the same diameter cord. So let's see. All right, just broke the RBS knot and we got three 0.58 kilonewtons, uh, which is pretty similar to uh, all the other things we tested in the four millimeter parachute cord.